You cannot, you cannot possibly believe properly unless we know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. And the creation, everything in this creation is a sign of the oneness of Allah. Everything in the creation is indication that Allah is the only creator and the only one who deserves our worship. Exerting efforts towards accomplishing sincere righteous actions. Doing good deeds, actions of the heart, loving Allah, feeding Allah, tawakkul ala Allah, relying and depending on upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you're working in the haram and a brother tells you, Akhi, this is haram, leave it alone. If you have this active worship of the heart, depending on Allah, you will leave the haram knowing that Allah will give you halal in return. You have dependence on Allah. That if you leave it for the sake of Allah, Allah will give you something better in return. But we don't have this. We continue to gain from haram because we really don't rely upon Allah. We think it's the haram that is sustaining us, not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are among the actions of the heart. Sincerity, being sincere, ikhlas. Siddhq ma Allah Azza wa Jal, all these qualities which we, we may lack or we may have some deficiency in, we need to also work on them, Ikhwan. Purify our hearts. The, the diseases of the heart are the most vital and the most fatal. So we must make sure that our hearts are pure and we cleanse them from every disease that may afflict them, which will cause us to be heedless, as we mentioned in the beginning of the lecture. So the actions of the heart is among the things that we must strive for. Secondly, the actions of the tongue, reciting the Qur'an, remembering Allah, enjoining the good, forbidding the evil, which is all part of da'wah. All of this is part of da'wah, inviting others to Islam. These are among the active acts of worship that we may do with our tongues, that will be means of our iman to increase. You give da'wah to one person whom Allah guides to Islam, and this will be better for you than the dunya and everything that is upon it. One person becomes a Muslim through you, Wallah, you may be guaranteed Jannah. And you don't have to do the whole da'wah, you may give him a ride, you may give him a book, you may give him a pamphlet, you may just treat him nicely. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever calls people to goodness, he will have a reward equal to theirs. Without their reward diminishing the least bit. If someone becomes a Muslim through you, then as long as they worship Allah and pray to Allah and fast and do zakah and do hajj and do umrah and remember Allah, you will get an equal reward <coughs> even after you die. And if they teach other people what you taught them, then you will gain the reward of the other people as well. And you will find yourself that your iman is soaring because of da'wah that you're making. So then again, the actions of the tongue, enjoining the good, forbidden, the evil. You see someone doing something haram, don't be afraid. Stop! Tell him, Ya Akhi, this is haram. Fear Allah. Fear Allah. Do, don't be shy. We must enjoin the good and forbid the evil. This is among the best actions of the tongue, which will increase our iman bi idnillah. Because Allah says, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lin nas. You were the best nation ever produced to people. Ta'muruna bil ma'roof wa tanhawna al munkar. You enjoy what is good and you forbid what is evil. So we should put that in our lives, beginning with our wives, our children, our neighbors, the community we live among, the people in our country, everyone. Muslims and non-Muslims. With the non-Muslims, you enjoy the good by calling into Islam, forbid the evil by preventing them from shirk. And with the Muslims, then each according to his needs. Lastly, the actions of the limbs. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنِ اللَّهُ وَمُعْرِضُونَ إِلَىٰ آخِرِ الْآيَةِ They have attained success to believers who are submissive in their salah and those who stay away from idle talk. All these are acts of worship that you do with the limbs. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ هُوَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Look at the combination between the iman and the salah. They are, they go one in one with each other. Allah says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ Verily, the believers, the only believers are those who are such that when the name of Allah is mentioned, their hearts tremble. And when the signs of Allah are recited upon them, the verses of Allah are recited upon them, their iman increases. And this is the evidence, among the evidences that Iman increases and decreases. Zadatum Imana. It will increase them in faith. And they rely upon Allah. Those who establish the Salah and they spend from that which we have given them.
So Allah says that the believers are those who iman, their iman increase among them, establishing the salah. And establishing the salah for the brothers being at the masjid at the right time, at the right place, and doing the salah properly. If my brother and sister in Islam, if you stand in the salah and you don't think about the Fatiha, we are in trouble. If you stand in the salah and as soon as you begin, you start yawning. And you say, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Akbar. Wallahi, Wallahi, everything I mentioned is applicable to us. It is impossible, impossible for a believer to be truly a believer and he will stand in front of Allah to pray and he will be so negligent about what he's saying in the salah. Impossible. So if we have this quality, we must, we must check, make a major, major check on our lives. What are we doing? Is the salah just a burden on our back that we need to get and finish? So we just do it as, as, as movements, huh? exercise, up and down, up and down. Do we stand in the salah and know when we say Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbil Alameen, and we pause for Allah to respond, to say Hamid and Abdi, my servant have, has praised me. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, do we read the Fatiha in this particular fashion? Do we feel that we are asking Allah to guide us? Do we feel saying when we say Subhan Rabbi Al-Azim, Subhan Rabbi Al-A'la, when we send the peace and the blessings upon the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, do we feel these, 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 this act of worship? If our Iman is good, then inevitably we will be as Allah described us in the Quran, الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ And this is all part of khushu' or submissiveness. So this is among the factors that we may be heedless about. How is our salah? We will use the salah to judge where we are on this gas gauge. We will only know based on the salah. I will do my own check and brothers and sisters, you do your own assessment and your own check. If we're not doing the salah the way it is pleasing to Allah, according to the way of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if we do not think about what we're saying in the salah, meaning we need to make sure that everything I mentioned earlier in the lecture is put into practice in our lives before we say goodbye. Before we leave without having our iman in a level which will guarantee us Jannah. And we said if we're not going to Jannah, then you know where else we're going to, we're going to go. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك جزاكم الله خير uh, There's a website there that has a little humble stuff It's a humble website, a humble, everything is humble there Don't expect anything fancy But if you missed the lecture or you want to share this particular lecture with others Then you'll find it on this website it's one of these free ones. I hope they don't change their mind and ask for money one day, then we'll have to cancel it out. And if you have any questions, you can always advise me, because I need a lot of advice. And I do appreciate those who advise me after the lectures or through the phone about some of the errors I may have or uh, my behavior or whatever. I'm open, inshallah, to any comments and criticism in order to improve myself. I don't claim perfection in my presentation and I'm fallible, I make mistakes. I try to correct myself as I learn from the advice of the brothers and sisters. So feel free to advise me at this particular website, one way to paradise at gmail.com. Uh, make sure you're, you're not too harsh on me because I'm sensitive. My question is related to your comments about associates. In order to bring our friends to the right path, isn't it connection more important than correction? If we don't connect, uh, how do we communicate effectively? Actually, we're not saying cut off the connection, but there's level of communication. Connecting with someone is at various degrees. Now, if you cut yourself off, then how are you going to invite them? How are you going to correct them? It's impossible. So you must maintain a link, but that link is measured according to necessity. Yani you only hang out with them enough to deliver the message you want to deliver. You don't do